Yes, I'm a few minutes late. Uh, what's up, Rosalie? How are you? Jacqueline K, Miss Figueroa, I apologize for the tardiness, ladies. Okay. Hey, oh, okay. Oh, more people. Hey, Miss Carol, we are new. Um, Sophia Smith, what? Well, hola. Hola, hola. Miss, uh, hey, Miss Suggs. Um, and hey, Miss Stevens, how are you? Okay. So, oh, it's a couple of things I want. I got to do, you know what? I just realized that I'm going to end up doing like two of these, because the next time I go live on Snatch Life, I'm going to um, have to um, put, the next time I go live on Snatch Life, I'm going to have to, um, oh, come on. I'm going to have to um, say what I'm about to say right now. And I have like a little, card I have like a little card but of notes of pointers and for some odd reason that I found it still gathering myself Sorry, y'all. Hey, everybody. Hey, Jackie. You guys give me one second. I'm sorry. I just started my YouTube live. Oh, popcorn, please. <laughs> Too funny. Yo, Jackie. Last night. So hilarious. I was busy trying to... um. I was busy trying to like weed out people off of um, Snatch Life and I got so into it that um, that coming on here and um, it just it just took away from me. Um, and then I think I think I finally finished watching Greenleaf. I was like, huh, this is it. I didn't really care for the ending, but we'll see what the next season brings. Um, Hold on, I feel cluttered, but I want to eat because I'm hungry. So let me put stuff here, there, everywhere. I have a table behind me. And let me tell you, I'm trying, I have all my junk on this table because this Airbnb doesn't come, well, in the room where I'm, it doesn't come with a dresser drawer. There's a closet with no, with no rods to hang anything. So I just pretty much just, I'm living out my bags like a hobo. Um... I don't know who designed who designed this joint, um, but either way, oh God, let me move all of this junk back. Ugh, what? Hold on. Sorry, but I got some good stuff tonight, so hang in there, you guys. Give me another minute. I was late, and I didn't want to be too late after Jackie putting up the popcorn and the empty. Um, after Jackie had the popcorn and the recliner. I was laughing, but you guys made me feel bad. So I'm like, okay, let me let me get it in. Um, let me make an effort. Okay. Here we go. So I'm going to eat as usual or do something while I do this. Get my pillows together so I can prop myself up. Okay. So I'm not so so I'm not so so low. Okay, so today I went to let's talk about my day first. Oh, I can say hello to everybody before I get on there. So who else did I end with? Let me go. Um I started with Miss Steven. Hey Kimmy Care, Miss Haynes, 
Miss Sims, Jackie N. Hey, girl. Jewel, Julie, Julie I. No, Julie S. Hi. Hey, Miss Hill. Um, oh, Rosa Larry said hello. Hey, Mama G. What's up, girl? Um, what's Clorox, Jackie? What do I need Clorox for? I have Clorox. Clorox too. Uh, but that's a stain remover. Um, do you have any advice? I'm going to DR on the 14th and my surgery is with Yili on the 17th. A little nervous. Advice on being nervous? Nothing to be nervous about. When you go when you go and you see Yili, you can ask her for a sedative and she'll give you a sedative. And let me tell you, you won't even remember taking the blue pill, at least I didn't, because I'd gotten a sedative the night before. I didn't get the sedative from her though, but I took a sedative. Um, but there's nothing to be nervous about. Think of it this way. Finally, you're about to hit the lotto. Who's going to be nervous for hitting a lotto, for getting a million dollars? Think of it that way. You're going to drive in an old car and you're going to come out a new car. Take a deep breath. Think about how much you have sacrificed to get where to get this. How much time from work. How much overtime you had to put in from work. If you didn't work for it, how many you had to get to get that. <laughs> no judgment here, girl. Um, but, and finally, the day you've been waiting for. If you can't see your toto, you're finally going to be able to see your toto. If you're married, your man is finally going to be able to pick, not even, to just eat your pussy and not pick up your stomach before you're finally not going to be able to suck it in. Think of everything that you wanted for yourself up to that time. There is no reason to be nervous. Numb your whole ring gig here and lean right into the process. Because you worked hard for it. And you've been waiting and waiting and waiting. And trust me, the last two weeks, you're like, damn, come already. You'll be fine. Just lean right into the situation and think about how long you've wanted this and how much you've sacrificed to get this. And here you are. You neglected yourself in some kind of area. You've neglected yourself somewhere, you know what I mean, like in your life. And like, you know, the time of your um, saving up money. Um, but here you are. My big advice that I would say, do what I did. For a very long time, I had bought um, a dream dress that I wanted. Um, that I used to be able to fit into before I had to gain weight for the surgery. But I knew it was coming. And I bought this dress one day when I went to the store. And it's amazing how you still see yourself as a person. And there I was seeing myself as size four. And I picked up a size four. Girl, I couldn't even get that thing up my thighs. And I tried a six, and I tried an eight, and I tried a 10. And when I got to the 10, I was like, fuck no. I'm in double digits. Like that really fucked with my psyche because I come from a place of two and four. And then I was like, all right, I'm a 10. Then I realized some stuff, I was a 12. And then I thought about, great, um, I'm gonna get rid of these titties. Then the fatter I got, these titties even got bigger and they could hardly fit in anything. And I was like, you know what, fuck it. And the only thing I can really fit was my Lululemon sweatpants. So I became, and the best place for me to shop was to go to Lululemon. So I became the, the Lululemon girl. And that's the only place I really, the place I really could go. And I started wearing these American Apparel t-shirt. Um, Cause I can dress up these Lululemons and I can dress them down. Just before my surgery, I was at Bergdorf Goodman. I was getting ready to come in. It was July actually. 
It was my birthday. And I'm like, what am I going to get myself for my birthday? Because I always treat myself to something. And my dream dress was a Victoria Beckham dress. And I'm in Bergdorf, and they're having this huge sale. There's sales everywhere. So I'm on the floor where all the fancy smancy labels are. And I'm going through the, combing through the, the sale rack. And I see a Victoria Beckham dress. And then I kept combing through. I saw another one. And then finally, the fourth or fifth or sixth one that I saw was one that I had wanted. It was last season. I don't give a shit. And it was a size four. And I bought the dress because I was waiting for myself to fit into that four. So I hung it up on a hanger. And I thought, great. I made myself look like an Oompa Loompa. I feel shitty about myself. I wear Lululemon all the time because they like really suck you up. Um, but no matter how much, like here I look good. But no matter how much I couldn't, like, yo, I was still round here. I couldn't hide my stomach. But I had that dress up there because one day I knew I'd wear that dress. Now, my only anxiety about that dress now, because I didn't try it on yet, because I was like, okay, is my ass going to fit into that dress? And I'm laughing because it's not like I'm fat now. I know the top is going to be fit thing. And I'm thinking, damn, I got to get this waist taken in. But is this culo going to fit in? Oh, is, uh, is, is uh, Prima here here? She don't like the word culo. Is my nalga going to fit? in the dress and that is like my anxiety now i bet you my butt won't even fit into the dress and that's going to be a ha 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 moment so yeah so go out and buy yourself a dream outfit and just put it in a hanger and put it in an area where you can see it and that's even goes for the ladies who are like on their weight loss to get the surgery um buy that dream dress and put it up there so you can see it that you need something to be your motivation every day it's like when you say your affirmation to yourself, I am pretty, I am smart, I'm good enough. When you do all of those things for yourself, then you wake up and you see that dress and you're like, okay, now I know. And then you eat that, and then you eat whatever it is that you're eating that you need to have in order to put that weight on. Um, so yeah, that's my only advice. But don't be nervous. Um, this is your moment. You've been waiting for this. You dread for this. Are you kidding me? There's nothing to be nervous about. Really, lean into it. And that's what I, and that's what I mean about having something to look forward to. And whatever you do, when you pack, please bring clothes for um, most people are not coming as long as I as long as I was here. I was here a really long time and I did not pack clothes for like holy shit. I look good, even though I'm wearing this faha. I'm like snatched, I'm feeling good. All my clothes were still the big dresses. So bring something nice for you to wear, even if it's something nice for you to go home with, because you'll look like a different person by the time you get ready to leave. Like your body, you'll be like, holy shit. Oh. Those are my only tips. And um. I didn't really bring my, my makeup because I was like, oh, I'm in Santa Domingo, I don't really care. Bring whatever it is that makes you feel pretty. Because you will feel pretty. You will have a different pep in your step. And so bring whatever it is that makes you feel good. Bring it with you. Whether it's a bottle of perfume, your favorite lipstick, bring it. Because trust me, after you've had the pain, you're going to feel good. And when you go home, even if you're in pain, you'd be like, oh, my God, I did it. Just the idea that you survived the surgery, it would be like, oh, thank you, Jesus. And then you'll see things differently. And odd but true, I've never really talked about it before. But because you feel better about yourself, you will expect people to treat you better. And I think they probably will just because you're walking with your hell held up high. Like, you don't, I didn't really think about it until like the other day, but yeah, but my advice is to don't be nervous, lean into the process. Why you ask Jackie if she, if she comes with ass attachments? I don't know what that means. Um, hold on. What the hell is going on? Hold on. Let me go down. 
I, I went too far down. Oh, you guys are having a whole entire sidebar. Okay. Did you guys today said I wanted from Manny? No, I'm seeing Manny on, I'm seeing Dr. Baez on Friday. I have an appointment with her. Um, as it turns out, Manny doesn't technically um, regulate Dr. Baez's appointment. Um, Dr. Baez's husband does. Um, and so um, he's going to get back to me on Friday. And since I'll be there on Friday because I have an appointment with Dr. Baez on Friday, then I will get all of that covered. But trust me, by the time I see Dr. Baez, I'm going to get what I need because I'm coming bearing gifts. Um, and then, so yeah, so I'll keep you guys posted on that. And then there's the Clorox thing. There's the nervous, hey, hey. Okay. Um, hey, Dainty. Jackie again. Hey, Vic hey, Victoria. Jackie was ready. Oh, yeah, she was ready last night. This review page, oh, okay. Um, let me see. Eat some gummies and pray, boo. Um, let's see. Miss Hale already said hello. Oh, hey, Miss Elliot, Mrs. Elliot, excuse me, moi, mon Um, Let me go down. Sidebar, sidebar, Miss Spinner said hello. Hey, Emily, I already said hello to you, Miss Stevens. If I didn't, hello again, Miss Stevens. Um, oh, Emmy, Emmy, bonjour, como se va? Um, I already said hello to you, Rosalie. Lululemon needs a sponsor. Okay, L girl, Lululemon sure do need to sponsor me, okay? Don't worry. On my Instagram, I tag them hard. But Lululemon does need to sponsor me. Lululemon, I tag. American Apparel, I tag. They need to sponsor me. And Rolex, I tag. And bitches, my Rolex are real. All of them. Don't be a hater. Be a fucking congratulator. Because I do these. I'm doing YouTube just for my haters. That's it. Or else I'll take it to Snatch Life. But I'm doing YouTube just for my haters. And really, people like MEM doesn't have um, Facebook. And there's some important information I have to give. So, ugh. My, my, my Rolexes are real. Mm, let me see. But I do appreciate you guys hating on me, though. I love it. Let me be petty for five seconds. I love it that every time I cut you guys off of Snatch Life, you guys go on your on, on uncut and you talk about me. I love that shit. If I had a dick right now, I would be jacking it off. And I would jerk right in your fucking face, bitches. Thank you. I feel good. Woo! You're going to turn my clit into a penis. Because every single time, every time I love it. Thank you, everybody. That bitch cut me off like I don't give a fuck. Well, bitch, if you didn't give a fuck, you wouldn't have, you wouldn't post it. But thank y'all to my haters. Oh, and all of you um, um, hidden people, I blocked you. I didn't block you. I cut you. So if you come again, I'm going to keep doing it. And public service announcement, opulence is trash. Don't go there. She hates black people. She's not black. She's British. Opulence recovery house is trash. How about that? Um, well, let me get back. Who else have I not said hello to? And then we'll get on to the business at hand. So haters, grab a pen and a pencil because I might... I might have some useful information for you to fucking share. Let's talk about sh let let come over come over. Go get your pen and your pencil. I'm gonna give you a moment while I do roll call, and then you're gonna come over here and get some real shit. Oh wait a minute, I'm sorry. Y'all bitches ain't having surgery for real. Cause if you were having surgery, you wouldn't be worrying about what the fuck I'm doing. Cause you'll be busy trying to get your bread. So, you know what? Let me let me stand up for you guys. Let me show you what you're gonna never look like. Ass bitches, what you're never gonna look like, like this, okay? Oh, and you want this ass? No, I'm not gonna get a round two because I got enough, but you can't even afford round one. So here you are. You can kiss the culo right there. 
So that's for you haters. I'm going to stand up. I'm going to give you all a reason to be really mad. Really, really, really mad. So if you guys want to play, we can play. Um, Cindy, find out what buys likes so I can bring her a gift. Okay, I will do that. Um, you don't need makeup. Ryan Johnson. Oh, I don't. Okay, I'm lost. Pregnancy. Who's pregnant? Hey, Ryan. I didn't even realize you're just here till just now. I'm reading, reading, reading. Um, lovely Joy. Hello. Um, you must be new. I've never noticed you before. Hey, Kimmy Care. How are you, Miss Haynes? Oh. Oh no, um, Jackie, they give a fuck. They're coming on my channel like being hidden. Bitch, show yourself. Show yourself. What you hiding for? I don't hide. And the difference about other administrators and me, I don't hide. I come up every day. You guys see me all the time. And even when I'm busted, I'm cute. So some of y'all ain't nothing y'all can do because you were not given the gift of pretty. Some of y'all just ugly. And ugly people... You know who you are. You know you're ugly. When you're ugly, when you're disgusting on the outside and you're even uglier on the inside, you're ugh, ugh, twice. I can be ugly. I can have an ugly attitude because I'm cute. So no matter what you do, ain't nothing you can do about this. Oh, you know what? That might be why you guys are miserable. I get it now. And Snatch Life really is the shit and you know it. That's why you guys are salty when I lock you off. But today... I'm going to give you guys free information. So go get your fucking pen because you might need this shit. That's exactly what I'm doing. But yeah, bitches, go get your pen and pencil because today I got some real shit to say. Let's see here, everybody. Okay. Oh, formerly. Oh, hello. You changed your name. You have more attention with this girl. I do, even in Santo Domingo, and it's like to see. It seems as if though, like every other woman. And Miami's question: Do I have more attention with this body? With yes, with with yes. I was in a supermarket a few minutes ago. I was in the barrio, and yes, 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 with this body. Yes, like yes, 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 yes. Yes, it hasn't been, like, um, disrespectful. Okay, remember the other day for the Snatch Life Girls? Okay, so the other day I was in the hood. Did I talk about that here, about me being in the hood? If there was a, if the hood had a hood, had a hood, had a hood, had a hood, that's where I was. And I think part of my saving grace of me being in the hood was everybody was so busy looking at my body, like they didn't even realize that I was a foreigner. But then the taxi driver told Logan told me I look like a Dominican, so that might have been my saving saving grace. And I know the language. But if I was an if I was an American, he said that I would have been um, in trouble. Okay, let's talk about today. Because today was um, a crazy day. I went. It was a crazy good day. So I went on a mission, and my first mission, I landed at the office of um, Dr. Buys. Mm, thank you, Miami. Um, sorry, I'm gonna stop eating after this. Let me, let me wrap it up. I haven't eaten all day. So I went to the office of um, Dr. Buys. <laughs> You're gonna get it, Soro. Okay. So um, I went to the office of Dr. Baez. Manny wasn't there, um, but I knew Manny was near. There was a big, huge discrepancy about um, Manny being in the surgery. We talked about that. It turns out that there was an, a room where all of the like nurses and all of the, uh, the attendants and all of the people like wait. Like it's a, it's like a, 
it's like a locker room. It's kind of like a hospital, like the nurses lounge, you know, the doctor's lounge and nurses area. It's kind of like that where everybody hang out. So Manny talked about sometimes he goes into surgery. That's what he was talking about. And so it was kind of lost in translation because it became a big thing. So Manny had showed me what he was talking about, like what he calls that room. It's a room where all the nursing staff and the people hangs out in. So he always talks about he goes there because they have lounges, they chill, people bring food, they eat, blah, 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 blah. So um, that's what that was all about. So I'm going to also have to bring that information to Snapchat because it was like, oh, my God, he goes into the surgery room. Um, sometimes he does go inside of the surgery room. If you really have to talk to Dr. Bais um, about a patient, if like the patient from the night before something happened, if it's an emergency, um, sometimes he does physically go into the um, into the surgery room where she where she is. If he's talking to her and she's sweating, whatever, or she has a long surgery, then he goes in to like check on her. I mean, she's the assistant, um, and he does like um you know put on the hat he, and he does wear gloves and he goes in like a normal person would do when they're going into a sterile environment so it is kind of like the same because that question was brought i didn't ask him right then and there but when i got off the live with him we went up and he showed me it's on the fifth floor so when you go to dr buys hmm. when you go to dr buys for surgery the room that they have you in when you're getting ready to prepare, it's literally across from that room. You'll see it. Um, so that was the first thing. So finally, I found Manny. Um, I went looking for him all over the building. Finally, um, I found him. And um, hold on. For some odd reason, my, my computer is updating. Okay. So... You know, I cancel that. I'll update it later. So I finally found him um, in the surgery. Um, I finally found him. We went into the office, of course, and then I started the live. Um, so I'm trying to get people some appointments for February. Two people need an appointment for February. I'm confident that I will get my date um, because I'm going to get those dates. Um, and she's really, really busy right now. Yeah, you think? Um, and, um, and I'm hoping, I don't know. Well, yeah. So I, I, so Friday I'm going to go see her for a situation, um, that I think may occur. Um, so I want to go talk to her about it, um, and see what she thinks. If she tells me to get out of her office, I'm being ridiculous. I'm going to do just that. But while I'm there, um, I have three people I need to ask things for, um, and so that was my day over there. So I will be doing another live with Dr. Bais after I do my personal business with her for the people on, um, on Snatch Life who have questions. And then I left Dr. Bais and I went to go hunt for Dr. Alexandrierish Carvet Carvendrish. And I couldn't find her. I went to the wrong place. I went to CSAP. And um, she was not there. But that is the office of Dr. Almonte. Um, I didn't go up to the Almonte office because no one needed that. So I just stayed in the lobby while I regroup and search for this doctor. And then I finally found her as, how was that pronounced? Sis Sisalip? Whatever it's called. So I finally got there. And that building was gorgeous. So I have like the outside of the building that I'm going to post on YouTube. I hope I saved that video um, from off of Snatch Life and I will put it on YouTube. That building is gorgeous from the outside to the inside. It's where Dr. Medina's office is, Dr. Uh, Mercedes is over there. And then there's this Dr. Alexandra Kakavich chick. Her. Now, the amount of blood transfusion as well as the amount of tummy tucks that are given. I know women who have come here for their surgeries who have never had children and they were giving a tummy tuck. And I was like, WTF? What? Um, 
if I've never had kids, I wouldn't get a tummy tuck. Like, um, unless your to unless your stomach is hanging over your toto, then I could understand. But there is a solution. So this Dr. Alexandrovich, she does not give blood transfusions. I repeat, she does not give blood transfusions. So she has an Instagram page. It's her name with Doctora. I'm going to put it when I come back in and do the comments on, on this one, because um, normally I don't, but I'm going to go in and fill it in and put in the doctor's name and says, because there are people looking for blood transfusion. So my client that I went out for today, she is a Jehovah Witness, and Jehovah Witnesses cannot get blood transfusions. So um, in the history of Dr. AK, uh-oh, AK-45, she cannot, or is it AK-47? She cannot, um, she has never given a blood transfusion. So that is like incredible. So for those of you, um, you can, she's um, a parent, she worked in Brazil before, so she's not technically a new doctor. Um, she worked in Brazil, trained in Brazil. So technically from her, when you go to her, I guess you really are getting a BBL, where for me, I have a DBL, I have a Dominican butt lift. Um, so yeah, so that's what I wanted to bring up with her because that is, um, that is incredible. Um, I wish I'd known that before. And so I'm going to go and check out her work, um, because I may potentially have another client who would like me to walk her through. Um, so I have her pictures thus far. I didn't get to see any of the doctors today because they were not there. They were in surgery. Um, I'm going to, I'm trying to help my client select a few doctors and narrow them down. So I'm going to put this new doctor, if I like her work, I'm going to put her on the list just because I like a doctor that does not give a blood transfusion unless it's absolutely necessary. And thus far in her practice, she has not deemed it to be necessary. Um, so I would like to go and see how aggressive her lipos are, how much she snatched that waist, and how she makes that booty. But my potential client um, is um, Caucasian. So I don't know if how big a white, well, you know, some white girls want big booties. I don't know. But either way, um, I will be checking out her work because I am now officially intrigued by finding this woman. So that is um, something that you guys may want to look into um, because that just seems incredible. Mm. Um, and then... Um, Oh, I went to Claudia for my massages, but he was super duper booked. Um, some of the ladies are leaving tomorrow, so I wasn't able to get one. Um, I like to get my massages from Claudia every day, but it seems as though I've been getting one every other day. I didn't get one yesterday. I really wanted one today. But um, I'm going to have a stand-in appointment with him um, very soon. Um, well, I don't mind taking care of like, um, of this stuff. I could have waited, but I didn't feel like waiting there all day. He would have taken me as his last patient for the day, but I didn't feel like being bothered. I just wanted to leave. I had a long day. I hadn't eaten. So I came back in. And then the next thing I want to talk about is the drivers and how you pay the drivers. Cause, um, the pay scale has changed. So, um, and it's because of you ladies. So I'm going to address the ladies here on YouTube. Um, and then I'm going to address it again when I do a live on Snatch Life. Um, I will address that there. Um, let me see some comments. Oh, yeah. Ryan, I can't wait for you to get your new ass, too. Yes. The burning hole in my ass attention. Hilarious. Cindy, can you ask Dr. Abizer's? She does arm lifts. She does. Have you tried her um have you tried her um her um her um Instagram page? Okay, I'm gonna tell you the problem with Dr. Buys in the photos because everybody loves the photos. Dr. Buys turns out she, I just thought she was a one-man office. She's a two-man office. Her husband and Manny. 
And Manny takes care of the ladies when they come in for their surgery. Um, he's taking care of them as they come in. He guides them through. He's, you know, he shuffles them in. Other offices seem to have more people. Dr. Bies is like um, at a hospital. So the hospital staff is already there. Um, and so the hospital staff comes in and out. But as far as her, it's only her and her. It's, it turns out it's only Bies and Bies' husband that runs her schedule. Um, and that was news to me today because I didn't know. Because these are things I never had to inquire about Bies before. Because like I said, she wasn't my doctor. I went there with, with someone, with a, with a Snatch Life member to go and have um, surgery. Um, and so these are things that I'm just learning. So men may not know what to post, but I will, people are talking about her boobs and her, and her arms. So I'm gonna put that on the list. And these are the things that, um, let me write the list actually, let me write it down. Hold on, because I, I will, I will forget. Oh, it's right here in front of me. If it was a snake, it would have bit me. So what I'm going to do is I am going to write a buys list. And these are things that I'm going to talk to her about when I see her on Friday. So buys. Um, Nikki's time, and then the um, mommy makeover. And then you want Bias to show her, her arm lifts um, and her breasts and her breast work um, pictures. Okay, whether it be on her. I think she does have her own, like, um, her own web page. I don't know if you want to go there and see, but I will definitely bring that up to her. And if anybody have any other body parts, I can bring that up to her as well, so that she, um, so that she can have that. Um, Yili Yili does younger chicks too. I'm sure she does. Um, thus far, I don't think Dr. Yili's for big girls. Really, I don't. Um, let me bring that up real quick, because I see, y'all should see what I see during the day, okay? There's a height to weight ratio, and you guys have to think about, you're coming all the way this way. You're investing money in yourself. You're not gonna have that small waist, really. Um, even though they're aggressive. But if you're like a big girl, there's only but so much fat you're going to take. Like, yo, wait a little longer. Some of y'all right now watching this video, put those damn Doritos down, pick up a carrot. If you wanna come here and you wanna invest your time here, like, I really, really think that people are coming here using this surgery for weight loss. No, that shit don't even look cute. I'm looking at them like, oh, you had surgery? How many? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. And I'm thinking, mm -mm. it's like, yeah, girl, I look big, right? Yeah, well, maybe, girl, you retain water. And I'm really thinking in my head, no, your ass is fat and you still look fat. You're probably, you're probably worse than before. You're probably better than you were before, but to me, you still look fat. And it's this whole thing with like thickness. I don't even know what that means. Because every time somebody call me thick, I always think it's like fat. But lose the weight. Like seriously, if you're going to come all the way here, you're going to torment your body through this shit. Like, yo, lose the weight. Because I'm tired of seeing you fat girls coming in here talking about, mm. no, you're not snatched. You're a little bit smaller than you were, but you're not snatched. To me, you're still. So for those of you still eating the fried chicken and all of that, so like I like to eat, I, I am a horrible eater at times. Sometimes I reel it in, and, but mostly I'm a crappy eater. Um, well, not really, I eat fairly well because I eat at some really good places, but I eat rich foods. Like I'll go someplace and I'll get the, the lobster macaroni and cheese. I don't eat that shit. 
because I don't want a salad. I don't want to be like at the pier hotel having a salad. It just seems stupid. But there are other healthier choices that I can make. But also, I portion control even when I eat horribly because I am not ashamed to take a doggy bag. I don't care where I am. I don't care if I have two sushis on that piece of plate. I am taking a doggy bag. I take it all the time. So you guys need to hone it down because there's only but so much these doctors can do. Yes, the lipo here is a lot more aggressive, but take that damn weight down before you come here. It's too far to come. So Dr. A.K. Alexandrovich, this this late this doctor, she will take mommy makeover BMI at 30. And if you're like a regular person just coming for lipo BBL, whatever. Um, she will take you at 33, but if you are five, if you are five, one and a quarter, five, two, like I am, and my BMI is 33, that means I'll probably weigh like 200 and maybe like almost close to 200 pounds. Then I'm a fat bitch and I need to take it down to at least 180, 190 and then come here and then I'll look better. So for me, don't go, I always like, don't go by the, don't go by like, by the, um, don't go by the like BMI, go to the height weight ratio. Um, it's on Snatch Life somewhere. Go to the height weight ratio. Like for me being 5'1", five, 5'2", five, I had to have been 5'1", um, 5'2", five, one, five, 185 and I'm going with 5'1". So I'm 5'1 and a quarter. So 5'2 was like 195. I was 183 pounds when I started. And so I posted my pictures before on Snatch Life. I probably didn't look 183 pounds, but keep in mind I had those big chichas and I don't know how much my boobs weigh. My boobs probably made me look a lot bigger and my boobs weigh through. Um, and then at the day of surgery, I weighed myself. I was 183 pounds the morning of surgery. Um, I think it was like a week, a week post surgery. I was down to 150 something, and then now I, I'm like 130. I think the last time I checked, I was like 133. Um, but I also walk a lot and I do and I'm and I do a lot of stuff. Like even here in like my room, I will I'll do squats on the walls. I do like lunges. I'm not allowed to work out my upper body yet for six months because these are my pride and joy and I don't want to jack up my babies. But my lower body is pretty strong, so I will do squats against the wall. I do lunges. Um, I'm going to have to stop going to yoga and Pilates class because that makes me lose, use my arm a lot. But, yeah, I am working out my lower body to keep myself going. So, yeah. It's, it's a, and you guys should start that right now, like really start working out right now so that you, it can like become a habit and you guys can keep it. Cause coming here, this is my second time going under the knife. I'm not doing this shit again. I'm not because, well, that's not true. <laughs> if I have to, I will do it for the third time. Um, just because of that, if that extra skin doesn't tighten up in the back, I will do it again for the third time. Um, Claudio is try trying diligently to get rid of it for me because he knows I'm a loca and he knows I will be back underneath the knife. Um, but I will give myself a year. I'm not going to give myself like six months. I'm going to give myself a year before I come back. So it will be the summer around the same time. Cause if I have to wear the faha, go through the whole thing all over again and it won't be liposuction. It'll just be to just to get rid of that extra skin. And even if I can do it in America, if it'll not be like too much, too ridiculous, then I'll do it if I like their procedure. But for right now, I'm going to um, interview doctors and find out which procedures that they do. For me, if I'm going to do anything extra, like around two, I will be going to Dr. Baez because I do love her work and I love her. So that's one of the things, that's the reason why I have an appointment with her on Friday to discuss that. Pop, it's out there. Okay, so let's continue. Um, can you get your hemo up? without iron yes you can without taking the actual iron pill yes you just have to eat really really well like eat a lot of greens like eat a lot of crucifix vegetables um i beat all the time i liver um your your hemo will go up with natural foods 
before my surgery, I became like super duper healthy. Um, when other, actually my only shitty habit is drinking. Like I go out, I like to entertain. And with this new body, I was pretty much out every day. I live in New York City. There's no need for me to sit around. Like I always say, you know, Ruth wasn't announced chilling and Boaz came by. Nope, she was out in the field, honey. So Cindy Castillo is out in the field because that's where Boaz is. He will not be coming knocking on my door talking about what's up. No, he will not be. So, um, so but usually before my surgery, I was eating really, 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 really well. Does Dr. Bai speak English? No. She knows like, hi, how are you? How do you feel? Kind of thing. Oh, mommy, you're already beautiful. I'm going to make you more beautiful, mommy. She's like that. But she's, um, Manny's always there. Um, he, like sur surgery English, I believe she understands. She just cannot like, um, like, uh, respond back. Um, I think like if you speak with her slowly, like she'll understand. Don't be like, oh my God, that's about it. No. If you go in and you're like slowly and you point, she'll figure out like what you're talking about. Um, she's very sweet. Manny's always there and you will not have a problem communicating, but no. For her English, no. But she does make an effort to speak English and I think more so than Dr. Yeely. So the little English that she does know she has English confidence, and to me, she will try, where I believe Dr. Yili doesn't have any English confidence, but apparently she saw Dini without her entourage, so maybe she has changed. Her and I, you know, like anyone on Snatch Life know, her and I, we sat down and we had a talk. She called me in her office, and she wanted to talk to me about, you know, what we talked about, um, and I told her a few things, and it looks as if though she's um, implementing them. I do, however, like Dr. Yili. I do. But um, I seem to have met Dr. Bais, and we just kind of have the oh kind of thing. But I'm always excited when I see Dr. Yili. I like her. I respect her. I do love what she has done for my body. Um, yeah. That's it with Yili. Um, let's see. I love how in Republic they have so many women surgeries and yeah they do there are a lot of women surgeons here and i do love that as well too you can get okay i already answered that one yili does younger chicks too i believe yili does everybody what do you mean yili does younger chicks too what? love joy girl okay i don't look my age boo. i'm looking good for 48. Let me see some of y'all out there hating at 48. Actually, you know what? Let me see y'all how y'all look right now. Before my surgery, I look better than y'all. And I still look better than y'all. It's not even about my body. I'm talking about right here. I still look better than you. You probably look crusty and wrinkly. And I'm sure if we go someplace else, if we go someplace, people will probably think that you're older than me. But yeah, um, she does do younger gals, whatever that means. Um, I'm probably in Yili's office. I'm probably one of the oldest people that had probably that I see because all the ladies that I think in her office, whenever I see someone, mm, excuse me, they're all, I'm thinking that I'm, that they're older than me. They're younger. I'm like, Oh, okay. And they be like, girl, how old are you? I'm like 48. But I always think that they're older. I've never met anyone in her office older than me. I've seen tons of people in there looking older than me. And when I ask them their age, they're younger than me. And I'm always embarrassed to tell them how old I am. Because then they do a double take. What you have done to your face? Nothing. But I did have some, some, a little thing done. But whatever. It wasn't significant enough for it to make a huge difference. Because you guys saw me before. Like, um... Oh, hey, Deanie. I didn't really realize that you were here. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Uh, the G-Shot when? Um, hold on. The G-Shot when? I'm going to, oh, I'm, I've gotten beyond myself. Hold on. 
Let me let me go up a little bit because I've missed some people. I'm trying to do all the questions. You will not be you will not be butt naked on live, so I want to be there for that. Cindy, can you exact it? Oh yeah, we've done that one. But Sora, you will not be butt naked to our lives. And they're gonna block me the shit out of me on Facebook and I won't care. <laughs> uh, yeah. And tell me what your husband says about that. Does bi speak English? English. Um, women, women in Dominican Republic. Does Yili do younger girls? Let's move on. Um, Oh, good night, Dini. You'll be there December 10th. Yes, I will still be here. Kim, Kimber Care, Miss Haynes, I'll still be here. So hit me up. Dini does need some sleep. She's been like, go, 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 go. Um, does Bias do 360 lipo? Of course she does. But I can put that on the list. For sure, but um, she gonna be like, "Yeah, girl, I'm a plastic, I'm a plastic surgeon." What do you think people come to me for? But I will put that on the list. Hit my buys list. So I just added 360 lipo. So I will get back to everyone's questions. Like on Friday, I will have a response. I will let her know about the arm lift, Emmy, Emmy. I'm slim thick, really, Jackie. So what am I? If you're slim thick, what am I? And you are snatched. Big arms, no hips, not good. Okay, that's something. I noticed some of the women are liking this fat look with flat stomachs where their thighs stick together and there. Yeah, well, if they think that shit is good, that's on them. Um, I don't think that um, I don't think that um, that that fat that fat look is cute, but. And yeah, and your thighs rubbing together. Ugh. I can't do that. Especially in the summer. Good Lord. Thick thighs save lives. Well, my thighs are thick. I think I have fear. I think I have fairly thick thighs. I don't think that my thighs are like skinny. Like I am hippie. And ugh, and thigh. You have to talk to your surgeon. To it because you don't want an effect for your BBL. You have to talk to yourself. Oh, you must be answering someone else's question. Um, on the BBL, if you guys notice on my before pictures, I had butt really just kind of got rid of my pig lips at the bottom and then made my butt like more round. But I already had some butt, hence the reason why my nalga look very big. But I think, um, but I think yes, if you're coming for like a good BBL, you're gonna need some fat. And ladies, once they do here in the Santo Domingo, they do not lipo your belly first from your belly fat, then use that. They do not lipo your belly fat if you're getting a tummy tuck. They're going to cut that fat off where your belly is. So if like a majority of your fat is like your belly, no, they're not using that because they're going to cut that fat off and then pull the skin down and give you a new belly button. And that fat is going to be put on a slab of like nothing. It looks, it's going to look like a piece of pork rind, <laughs> like before it's cooked up. Um, they're, they do not lipo your belly, then cut it, then no, they don't do that. They cut off the, the stomach, the skin with the fat, and then they put that on the side. So this fat that they use is all the other fat they take from area, from other areas. Mrs. Um, Miss Betty, they even took fat from her chin because she needed wherever they can get her fat from. That's where they take it. But if you're coming to get a tummy tuck and a majority of your fat is in your belly and you don't have stomach rolls, you need to look at yourself and say, damn, do I have enough fat for my BBL? And if the answer is no, you need to put some weight on. 
because that's the only fat that they're going to use is the rest of the fat that you have left. Whatever they cut off, I think they probably start here and then they pull the skin down. Whatever they take off, or maybe it goes by the navel somewhere, who knows where they start the BBL scar. I guess you guys can figure that out. Um, and then they have to pull the, the skin down together and right here. They, this fat area here, they cut this off and then they put it like a slab of meat somewhere. And they don't use, they don't lipo you, then do that shit. No, they cut it off so that fat is of no use to you. The only fat that they will use is whatever fat they take out of here, where and wherever else they take out your fat. But this right here, no can do for your BBL. So the rest of it can. So if you're going to get a tummy tuck, make sure that you have enough fat for your BBL. So, or else your BBL may not come out if you want to. And I think that may be the reason why people put on weight and then come back for a round two. No, I wouldn't get another round two. I'm not getting anything more stuffed up in my butt. Um, no, I'm not even going to get big enough for that. Um, let me see what else is there going on. Jackie, stop calling my friend a bitch. Jackie, stop calling my friend Jackie a bitch. Oh, does she? Okay. So, how do you pronounce her name? Mal, mal, mal. Hold on. Malal? Is that a woman? Or is that a man? Apparently that doctor does bigger girls. I'm going to have to check them out because I have a big girl that called me um, about a doctor. No, Ryan. Okay. So Ryan is 5'2". She's 175 and you want to lose 10 pounds before surgery. Ryan, are you trying to get a BBL? I'm scared I won't have enough fat for my old ass. No. No, no, Ryan, if you are 5'2", 175, no, mama, no, you don't want to lose any weight, losing 10 pounds, losing 10 pounds is 10 pounds of fat you're not going to have for your ass, so, and then keep in mind, they don't use every ounce of fat, they got to strain that fat through, so if I were you, I wouldn't lose any weight, if I were you, I put on five. I will put on five pounds. I wouldn't lose, I'd put on, I'd put on five pounds. I wouldn't lose five. Um, because keep in mind, I am one, I was 183 and I am five, one and a quarter, technically five, two. And, um, look, look how I am. Hold on. Let me put on the bra and then I'll show you. Hold on. I put on my surgical bra. Give me a second. I don't want you. I don't want um, YouTube banning me for nudity or blocking me. But I thought you can have nudity on. Um, okay. So I will take off. I will take off my pants as well. Okay. So I will take off my pants as well. And then Ryan, you saw me. You saw my before, you saw my before pictures. And then now you're looking at me after. So five, one and a quarter, really, there's no such number. So they really put me as like five, two, which is um, the number that I always. Oh. Sorry, guys, hold on. No wonder I was suffering in this last night as I was sleeping. All right. Oh, okay. So I am. Uh, so pre-surgery, I was one hundred and eighty-three. 
and I'm pretty much 5'2", right? And these are my results after surgery. So if you want, I don't know how your bum 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 is. Look at how my butt was before. But, and if you want, so here is my side, here's my side, and then here is my butt. So I don't know how much booty you want. Um, I don't think for your size, for our size, I don't think we want to go any bigger than this booty. Because when I tell you, this booty gives a lot of attention. Like, no, Sora, you have a husband. You don't want your husband out there. And you in Chicago, you want your husband home in bed with you every night. You don't want him down there walking around with a pistola like, and trying to be like, yo, what you look, what? Because you know how men could be. So, and if he's a frat, you know how they can really, really be. So if I were you, um, you're small like I am. You don't want anything more than that, trust me. And apparently, according to people who have seen me in actuality, they say my ass is bigger than what it looks like when I'm talking to you guys. And this is what I have. So if I were you, I would probably put on a little bit. If you want that pow, pow, if you want that damn, if I were you, I would put on at least 10 more pounds, but do not lose 10 pounds because you're already at 175. And especially if you're coming here for a culo and you're talking about how you want that um, disrespectful attention. Okay, if you want disrespectful attention, and that means that you want this pow, 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 and you're probably different than me. I don't really necessarily need a pow, 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 because the men that I date are not into the pow, pow, pow. But um, you like the pow, pow, pow. I get that feeling. So no, girl, don't lose no weight. Look at me as like your guideline. So we're pretty much the same height. So look at my body as the guideline of like what you would be. Um, I always think like, oh my God, should my waist be a little bit smaller? And people are like, bitch, shut up. Your waist is small enough. Um, but yes, but this ass, this ass right here is gargantuous. Let me back. Oh, I can't, I can only back up, but so much. But this ass is like gargantuous. That's a whole lot of fucking booty. It really is. So Ryan, no, don't lose 10 pounds, girl. Mm -mm. You will you will be mad at yourself because you're not going to get that, oh, I want that disrespectful ass. You're not going to get that, damn, like you're looking for. So don't do it. Don't lose any weight. Um, no, definitely not. Oh. So it's mignon. Mignon. Okay. Thank you for letting me know that. Oh, and these are all of the doctors that do bigger girls, like um, Laurent. Oh, I ain't going to tell nobody's name. Desla. I don't have to. Uh, no, I'm not going to do Cynthia Desla. Hmm. You go out in a whale, come out of size two. Where? Desla? Oh, that's right. That was your doctor, wasn't it, Jackie? Okay. Are you a size two, Jackie? Oh, Cindy knows her Bible. Yes, I do, honey. Yes, I do. Yes, 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 I do. I have read it. Because uh, to me, the Bible has the best stories. I am fascinated by the Old Testament. Fascinated. I'm not as fascinated by the New Testament. I'm not, not that many good stories. But I am fascinated by the New Testament. My ass, last I checked, was a 42. So here are my measurements. Okay. So I am a, I am, the girl told me that I was 36, like up here. But I, but I feel more comfortable like in a 34 bra. Um, before, when I'm done with all of my massages with Claudio again, I'm going to have him measure me. As a matter of fact, um, the next massage I have with Claudia, I'm going to have him measure me. So as of right now, I am a 34, 36, 24, and this was 42. And I was like, what? My ass has never, ever been 
been that big before. So I'm, I'm 42, 24, 36. I'll, I'll claim 36 for now. And then I'm going to have Claudio measure me um, because I, I, I need to start. Before I had a standing appointment with Claudio. And I need to get back to that standing appointment like every day. Um, and for some odd reason, I seem to be losing that right now. But I am, but I am, um, but I'm going to have him measure me so that I'll let you guys know at the end, um, at the end, how much I, um, how much I, how much I, how much my butt is. But the last I checked, it was a 42. Um, and then keep in mind the entire time that Claudia was massaging me, he never really touched my bum. So he would do like through here, kind of like that. Like, especially when I, when, when I'm laying down, you know, like he does all the other stuff, but he's never touched my butt or massaged my butt to this very day. He's never touched my butt. And I think you're not even supposed to touch the booty booty. So he's never touched the bum. Um, he hasn't done anything with it. Oh, I just said my exact measurements. Um, Okay, so this was for big girls. Thank you for letting me know that so I know. Um, who do you guys think have the best mommy makeover? Yes, it's Marcos. It's Soto that's related to Cabral. I think that's his nephew. She will not fit BMI in her new year. What is she doing after the new year? Oh, ha, ha, ha. She said, Ryan want that Keisha Barbie ass. I don't know about that. Ooh, Ryan. That's way too much ass, baby. I don't know if you want that Keisha Barbie ass. That is way too much. That's a whole lot of ass. Is Keisha Barbie in here? I haven't seen her. That's a whole lot of ass. No way. I do not have Instagram. <clears throat> I thought about, um, this is for um, Emily. I do not have Instagram. I thought about it. But girl, please. I am overwhelmed with just the damn Facebook. And then here on YouTube. Mm -mm. I cannot add another damn social media. I have my own personal Instagram, but I do not have a surgery Instagram. Mm -mm. I can't fit that in a schedule. I thought about it, but no. Um, <clears throat> these days I seem to be a one woman show doing everything. And between the ladies calling me for help, doing Snatch Life, and um, then doing these YouTubes, no. I cannot fit that into my life. I want to, but I can't. Um, it's just, it's overwhelming. Like this snatch life um, literally like consumes my life. And believe it or not, I am shocked, seriously, that, um, oh, hold on, let me try to make myself comfortable. Yeah, I don't know why I didn't do it this way before. Here we go, what the hell was I thinking? Okay, I am so shocked that I am still doing these videos because let me tell you, I'm the kind of person you get on my nerves too much. I'm out. Um, I just be like, fuck it. Now I know why people don't share. Um, and I've learned to just scream through it. Um, it's very, it's, it's very time consuming, consuming and it's a lot of dedication. Hence the reason why people don't, number one, um, I think people are trying to break me down and no, nah, that ain't going to happen. I'm a very strong bitch. And number two, I'm not a quitter. So, but it's more so for number one, I would never give anybody the satisfaction of thinking that they have, you know, cracked me. Anyway. No, no. Um, sidebar, I was in this town, I was in this country of, Af of Equatorial Guinea, 
um, it's in West Africa. It was Spanish Africa. I was very fascinated that there was a Spanish Africa. And in this town, I was in Malabo. Um, it's like an island in the Navat. It's like a peninsula, half island, half land. Um, so I'm there in Equatorial Guinea. And they were, oh, hold on, my computer's overheating. Let me, I'm like, what is that sound? Hold on, let me anchor it a little bit. Because Macs never overheat. Do I have it on plastic? Maybe I have it on something. I do. I had it sitting on plastic. So hold on, you guys. Let me adjust. Okay. Let me adjust here. Okay. So I am in this town. And everyone is, like, nasty. And they just really, really hated black people. They just do not trust black people. Um, and they think you're coming there. It's an oil rich com it's an oil rich company. And unless you are a part of the Obiang family, then you're screwed. Um, so sidebar within the sidebar, the guy the son Theodoro, I knew him from LA. At one point, do you guys remember recently, you know, all the black girls who listened to the to the local gossip? Elise Neal went on to Portia and told Portia to fall back from her man. That was Theodorine because Portia tried to imply that she was dating Theodorine. And Elise Neal was like, bitch, don't play. And he's also the same guy that got Eve into like the trouble with the FBI kind of thing because um, he, was, um, he was given Eve millions of dollars transferring through. Um, he dated Eve for a little while. And he is also the same guy, for those of you who live in D.C., there used to be a bank called Riggs Bank. I've seen Riggs, like, mostly in D.C. They had a huge office in, like, um, um, like downtown, no, like Georgetown. They have, like, their big main. It was actually a bank when I was a student at Howard. Um, they, that family single-handedly brought down Riggs Bank. So anyway, so there I am. So just some little sidebar in the country. So there I am um, in um, there I am in Equatorial Guinea, and they were very disrespectful. If you were white, they roll out the red carpet as you come out the plane, and they will give you their best fours. If you're a black coming in there, they're looking at you sideways and trying to figure out why you're coming over there. Um, I was kind of invited. I was invited to the country, hence the reason why I went. I had met some people. And they were like, oh, when you're traveling through Africa, you can come by. I did 47 countries alone. I end up going there. And literally that entire fucking town tried to just break me down because no one believes that like you can travel to like Africa alone. Like you literally, they feel like, oh, you're a black girl from America. Who sponsored you? Who's bringing you here? Um, as American girls, we know that uh, if we sat around and waited for a man to feed us, we might starve to death. So, um, like I said, I'm fearless, and that's probably the thing I like about myself. Like if you said, two things you like about yourself. Number one, I'm resilient. Number two, I'm fearless. But those are my two things for myself. I'm fearless. Like I have no fear, and I am resilient. I'm a girl who kick me down. I'm going to come back up. And kick me again, I'll be back up. Um, and so there I was in this town, and I had a horrible, horrible, horrible time in this town. Like, it literally took everything that I had in my soul to get out every day and make appearances in the town. And I would take some time off just to um, regroup and get myself together. Or I would he head down to the other side of the island which is um, get on the plane, and you can only get to the other side of the island on the plane um, to like Bata, the mainland, on a plane. So I'd get in the plane, and I would go to Bata. Um, but for a long time, they tried to break me down. And I stayed in that town, that town, for a year while I traveled around just to prove to them that they couldn't break me down. When I got good and ready, I left. But when they were really trying to oust me off the island, I didn't go. So that's me. 
So, and, and that's the kind of um, personality that I have. So, um, but it's very difficult to um, do this shit like every day. Um, but sometimes it gets tough, but I, I kind of like, eh, fuck it. I'll yell and scream at people. Not just yell and scream at the people on Snacks Line. Um, and then the others go talk about me like a dog, but I don't give a shit. Um, because I'm going to do whatever it is that I need to get through this. Because really, I really started because I wanted to bring the information out there. And um, like today, going out and, you know, doing the videos and getting information for people that they needed. That's what I was doing the last time that I was here. And at that time, I was just a couple weeks. Shit. I was like one week post-op and I was out and about. Ask anybody who's been with me for a while. I'll tell you. So today, it felt really good for me to be out there getting the information. That's the kind of stuff that I like. I really enjoy it. So, um, yeah, so here we are. And I don't know where that long explanation came from. Somebody asked me something that led into that, but that's that. Oh, right, about my Instagram page. So the answer is hell no. Um, of all the things that I've got going on, I cannot afford. Where is my mouse? Of all the things I have going on, I cannot afford to do another um, social media page. Maybe in the future, but for right now, ugh, I am overwhelmed with these two because um, between Facebook and and here Instagram, this literally consume my life. Like. Literally, 90% of my day. Literally. It's all I do. Um, yeah, so that's that. But if that changes in the future, I will definitely let you know. But I don't foresee that happening um, unless I get some help, which I doubt I will because I am tired of the help. I just decided to just take it into my own hands. And then, and then I'm going to be the queen of the leap. <laughs> <laughs> because if it agitates me when I, if I get up on the wrong side of the bed and somebody's asking some redundant question, I'm just going to delete them. And then if they come and they ask another stupid question of that, I'm just going to block them. There you go. And that's how I feel because I think I give really great information and I think people should feel privileged to get the information. And that's why I'm going there. Oh, Jackie, she's two months post off. Really, is it that fast? I think it's sad that there are places on this planet that black people are welcomed with open arms. Yeah, that's true. There's a, there, oh my God, Africa is like the worst. Africa is like, wow. I was really surprised because when I was traveling through Italy, I ended up going to like Morocco. And I remember the guy was like, oh, we're going to go tomorrow. I was in a hostel and the guy was like, we're going to go to Morocco tomorrow. I remember going to bed thinking, did he say Morocco? As in Morocco, 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 damn Morocco, Italy. So when I got up for breakfast in the morning, I'm like, did you say last night we were going to Morocco? He's like, yeah, I'm like, which Morocco? He's like, how many Moroccos do you know? I said, there's only one, like Morocco is like in Africa? And he was like, yes. And I was like, are we that close? He's like, yeah, close enough. So we got on the speedboat, boom, in like 45 minutes to an hour, we were in Morocco. I was in Marrakesh having dinner and I was like, oh my God, I'm in Africa. And cause that was like a dream. That was like a total, total dream. Um, cause at one point I had moved to London for two years. I let a flat once I figured that means rent an apartment. Um, and then I was just traveling around the world um, on my own. I stayed in the hospital for about six months. And then I finally decided to let a flat because it was cheaper than getting into the hostels. Not really cheaper, but I can like leave my clothes and not have to worry about it. There was really no place for you to leave your clothes like at a hostel. Um, I was given tickets. I came back to Mama in to go to the World Cup and made it to South Africa. And it was like, holy shit, I'm going to Black Africa. I'm in Black Africa. I hated fucking Joburg. White people walked in behind me and they would serve them before me. They wouldn't come to my table. And I was like, yo, you know, the apartheid is over. I would have to get ghetto and be like, damn, I can't get service. Like I really got very ghetto black American because I just got frustrated. And then I didn't want to order because I thought they'd be spitting in my food. The same, you know, 
So that was a mess. Um, the thing that I liked about Joburg was, oh, I went to the prison where Mandela was and looked out the window. And I was on a tour with all white people, so I had them sit outside. I'm like, do you guys mind? Can I just go in alone? Do you guys mind? And they just kind of just let me. I when oh, like we're here, and I push right to the front. And then when we got to his actual jail cell, I was like, hey, do you guys mind if I have a moment alone? So I rub my body and my hands all over the walls of the cell. And I physically plucked my ass and laid on the floor. And all the white people sat outside by the bar just looking at me, trying to figure out what the hell is she doing. But I was just absorbing the essence of the place. And then I stared out the window. And then I walked out the room about five minutes later, and I let everybody else enjoy it. And then they, when they moved on to the other thing, I went back in, and I had another moment with Mandela. But I felt like, hey, let me have a moment, please. And they had it. And I'm glad they did because I probably would have clicked off on them if they hadn't. But they kind of, they were a bunch of like Europeans. They kind of let me go in and have my moment. Maybe they understood what I was doing. Who knows? But um, but yeah. But other than that, I hated Joburg. Durban and Cape Town was better. But yeah, there's a lot of issue and colorisms. Um, in Africa. When I got to Nigeria, they started freaking out because I was basking in the glory of the sun. And I was like, yo, where I come from is dark and about really sweet as juice. When you are, you know, in the summertime, you get dark. In the wintertime, hold on, Claudio. Snatch Life, I have to, um, I'm going to do a live on Snatch Life when I'm done here. I want to say something to the Snatch Life girls. Um, yes, Ryan Debris, she's like, okay. So that's it. Um, I need arm lipo. Yeah, I already did that part. Um, I guess this is the end. Oh, thank you. No worries, Emmy Emmy. I know you're French. Um, you seem so much lighter today. Re oh, Sensei, what's up, girl? Really? No, I'm looking chocolate today. I thought I was looking cute and chocolate. I like my skin darker. I'm like, yo, I need to go out there in the sun. Oh, what you gonna help me with, Sora? Um, okay, so that's it. I am, um, okay, that was Jackie. I think that's the end with Emmy Emmy. Okay, so I thank you guys for coming coming over here. Snatch Life Lember, I'm about to go on Snatch Life because I have an announcement on Snatch Life. Um, I have something to say. He's probably not gonna tell me the truth, but, um, I'm trying to find out right now. So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna live on um, on Snatch Life right now. So you guys meet me over there. Okay, that's it. Good night, ladies. See you guys tomorrow, um, eight o'clock, New York time. Whatever that is, wherever you are. Eight o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Good night. Snatch Life people, come to Snatch Life. <laughs>